Alright, welcome back boys and girls. It's another episode of Baet Experience. Yes sir, whatever floats the boat. Correct. Wow, I'm deep. Pero yung first mo kasi sabi niya lang, first time. <laughs> yeah. Yung first time mo, hindi mo makakalimutan yun. Diba? Doon tayo na-divergenize sa podcast. Oh. Alright, welcome back boys and girls. It's another episode of Bayet Experience Podcast. For those who are tuned in, don't forget to follow and like us in Facebook and Instagram. And we're hyping it up in YouTube. So watch and subscribe to our YouTube channel to search Bayet Experience. So tonight's special episode is brought to you by our friends and sponsors, Bombing with A, the legendary DIY mixes. It's still available in 350 ml and now with bigger and heavier bomb at 500 ml bottles. And also check out the Bombing with A Facebook page for details. Also available right now, their dual holiday packages. So you can, uh, you know, get it for gifts for your friends and sponsors, whatever. And of course, there are corporate packages to bomb through your friends and family's holidays for only 499 pesos. Sobrang sulit. Boom. And of course, Deli Mari Manila. Uh, we thank you for the donut. They just sent us donuts. Uh, too bad we can't send in the US for our I'm guests. Sorry, Kyle. Uh, but but yeah, it's really good. Uh, I just had like two, and there are more flavors to try. Thank you for sending us. And uh, just search Dele Mari uh, on Facebook. It's a delicatessen and patisserie. So just give them a follow on Facebook and choose from their wide range of delicacies, starting with their stump juicy, awesome Dele Mar Manila provided a promo dessert package featuring your bad boys. So check out and Choose from JL's, Eman's, and Edvel's, and Carlos' favorites at our latest post. So check our bad, bad experience post as well. For orders, just text 0905-342-4201. Guaranteed be, to be truly fresh and delightfully made for you. Uh, thank you for those friends and sponsors, by the way. I want, I want uh, uh, as we say it, paligoy-ligoy uh, pa, or dili-dali. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we're back with another Ultimate Artist Experience and we have a special guest now and our guest is a director and cinematographer. So he's from Hitmaker Films. Uh, you've probably uh, seen if you're from the Bay Area covering weddings as well as open light films for commercials, corporate brands. If you've seen some content from Stephen Curry, Kevin Hart. And if you're from the Bay Area, you've probably seen his films all the time. Mr. Kyle Henry. Sir, how are you doing, man? Uh, oh, yeah. ka? <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, wow, wow. <laughs> there you go. Uh, how you doing, man? Uh, uh, you know Tagalog, huh? So, uh, 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 oh, there you go. <laughs> Actually, later we prepared some, uh, uh, Carlo prepared some surprise for you. Uh, there's some, uh, I, I, won't, I won't say the surprise is a tongue twister, but be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Just, don't give me nosebleed. <laughs> don't worry, it's it's difficult for us as well. But yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll yep. join you. We'll join you. Yeah, our, all our noses will be bleeding here. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, how's life? Uh, uh, you're from the Bay Area, so from what specific area uh, uh, are you in? Yeah, um, originally I'm from New York and then I, I oh, moved okay. all over uh, Atlanta, Memphis, but I've been in the Bay Area for 10 years now um, Sweet. and we're in the further East Bay. Oh, East Bay. I see. So uh, let me just share my story with the last time I was in. Actually, that was in San Francisco. I mean, I love San Francisco. San Francisco. I don't call them Frisco, by the way, or SF or however, you, <laughs> you know, hipster call it. Uh, <laughs> The last, uh, uh, the last memory that I had when I was in San Francisco was uh, I was walking uh, down in Japantown and I saw a car just stop by right beside a parked car. And he just went down, wrapped his hands with some cloth, and he just punched through the windows and got, get the bag from the bag. <laughs> I mean, I love San Francisco, man. I love the food. I love all the, uh, the culture itself. But that was the most memorable thing that I had in San Francisco. <laughs> and, and you know, that, that's very San Francisco because I lived a lot of places. And San Francisco is the only place where you can be in a very rich, wealthy neighborhood and take two steps and then see tents of a bunch of homeless people just down the street. And then you take another 10 steps and it's rich. And then another 10 steps and yeah, you're back with yeah. the homeless again. It's weird. Yeah, I know, I know. 
<laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so so your film work. So how 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 are you doing right now? Uh, I mean, with the mid, I mean, amidst COVID nineteen, can you tell yeah. us more about your work? Oh yeah, thanks for that lovely introduction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I produce wedding films and uh, commercial um, uh, films as well too, and weddings is just completely um, gone. Um, about. 10% had stuck around for this year, but small micro weddings, 10 to 20 people. But luckily, um, so to go backwards, things was quiet for me all the way from April to June. So you have months of just crickets. Yeah. And then after June, luckily some corporate and commercial work started to open up. So it's not like it was before, but at least I'm working again. So that's a good part. Oh, that's great. So can you walk us through your works and your filmmaking process? I mean, it's a ultimate artist experience, uh, you know, just to give us some yeah. feel on how you do your work. I saw your mm-hmm. um, uh, work with Steph Curry and Kevin Hart, the sweat work. I see you, you know, it's a seminar kind of venue and it's like a big venue and you guys like making people sweat. Uh, can you tell us more about that? <laughs> I saw that too, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so um i've been um doing video production since 14 i started in high school and I, I just love it i love what i do um so it really just motivates me to do the best job that i can do so with an event like that it's, it's a real event real people uh most of the time you can jump in and stage a little bit of shots but you kind of have to get it as it happens so we're taking real life and trying to make it look as best as possible so when you're working with people like Kevin Hart and Stephen Curry, it's a lot of high profile people. So you just got to make sure you really know what you're doing because they're trusting you to make this great video and you have to deliver. Yeah. I, yeah. Can, I, can, I can only imagine the degree of difficulty of doing yeah. that. The but, but by the way, by the way, uh, you're probably the closest thing for us to get close to Kevin Hart and Steph Curry. <laughs> exactly. That I'm, this is the this is a proud moment for us. So. Yeah. yeah, I'm so proud. <laughs> so, so how is it working with with both of them? Right? I mean, we're all basketball fans. We're not not as good as any of the people that were mentioning. But how is it working with Steph and Kevin? I mean, we love Kevin. We watch his like his Netflix uh, shows and all that. Um, even his other shows, his movies and all. That. He's crazy. He's nuts. So how is it working with both of them? Yeah, um, I, I've worked with Kevin once, but I've worked with Steph a bunch. Um, so um, Stefan, he's he's super down to earth. And um, I've, I've shot at his house before and I've shot multiple videos with him. And the first time that I met him, um, he introduced himself. So I'm like, you're Stephen Curry. Of course I know you. <laughs> but it still just, it, it speaks to his character that like he's still humble enough to like awesome. walk into a room and make sure that like he shakes hands with everyone. Pre-COVID, before COVID. Uh-huh. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and he, he's still humble enough to introduce himself. And uh, working with Kevin was, it was a great experience. Uh, it was a long, grueling day. We shot three videos in one day, just running around San Francisco. And he was teaching about financial literacy and giving back oh. to the community. So it was cool to see someone that big kind of invested in giving back to the community in, in terms of like, we know he can do comedy, but it was cool to see him in a different light talking about financial literacy. That's cool. I think I need to change my perspective with Steph because I'm a LeBron fan. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Now that you're saying he's humble and nice, I mean, <laughs> okay, it'll, it will take time, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, like, like it, at first, I, I didn't give LeBron the due credit that he deserved, but the more I looked at him, I was like, not much you can really say wrong about this guy. Like he uh, never had any scandals. He takes care of his family and he's, 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 he's like the greatest at what he does. Um, but I think with Steph, he just always has like that, like nice guy, Brandon and LeBron's up taking like all of the heat, but it's just funny mm-hmm. to watch those two. <laughs> yeah. I would agree on that. And, and coming, coming from a, you know, someone who covers Steph and his family, by the way, I've seen some videos with him and Ayesha. You've, produce right uh and even the kids like riley and uh all the other kids uh uh so so are you guys like really close now and like you do dinners with family or something like that or? no i'm not i'm not that close <laughs> um <but> like <laughs> because if you tell me i'm gonna be flying to us and then <laughs> <laughs> no like 
<laughs> they're always super uh, welcoming and they know me on a first name basis and whenever i Sweet. see them they're always super friendly but uh i haven't upgraded to dinner just yet but i'll let you know <laughs> <laughs> please let me know so i would know when so, i can buy yeah. so ticket. we'll buy our tickets yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the last time that I went over there, they did give me um, a bottle of wine from her wine company. So that was really sweet. Cool. No, yeah. who who, nice. who had a, who had a wine company? Um, Aisha and her um, sister in law they own a wine company oh. together. Mm. Yeah, must be based in that part, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So like that's the cool thing too with um, about California, especially Northern California. It's just. Mm -hmm. You get Silicon Valley um, and oh, then for yeah. weddings. Uh, like you guys have all the idols there, Jason McFarlane and John De Guzman for weddings. Uh, but we have Napro over here and it's just, it's iconic. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So yeah, I, uh, I, talking about Kevin Hart, I heard that there was a story behind uh, your first work uh, with Kevin Hart. I uh, heard that that big opportunity called when you were here in PH. Can you tell us more about it? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, that's the tough thing about my profession is just I'm so passionate in what I do. And sometimes it just doesn't feel like work for me when I'm working. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a young family. So balance and family and work is always a tricky one. But so we're on vacation. We usually go to the Philippines about every other year. And we were in the Philippines this year. And I think I'm a week into my trip. And usually I stay about two weeks. My wife wanted to stay a month. But I think one weekend I end up getting a call and they're like, can you film um, Kevin Hart and Steph Curry? And it's like a three video deal. And I talked it over with my wife, uh, Marielle, and she's super supporting. Um, she's Filipina. Um, so she supported Filipina my career moms. all the way through the Filipina end. women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing I can say about them. They're very, very supportive. So she was like, you got to go, go. It doesn't matter. Like, so right in the middle of my trip, um, I bought a ticket. The cool thing was I never flew first class internationally uh -huh. and the first class ticket was only $300 more than the regular. So mm -hmm. I was like, Nope, I'm flying first class. I <laughs> <laughs> well, who would say no to Steph Curry and then Kevin Hart, right? I know. Uh, yeah. Kevin. So I'm like, that's the hard part. Cause I know it's an amazing opportunity and I know I like, how can I say no? But at the same time, like, I think it's important as a husband to check on with your wife and make exactly, sure. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Happy I think wife, it's good that she's life, on the... right? <laughs> yeah. Very so she never, she never gave you the look, right? Go. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the trap question. Like... <laughs> <laughs> go. <laughs> We're happy here. <laughs> go. We're happy Just here. Just go. With, with, with rolling eyes. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> no, no. We've been together 12 years, so oh, I know great. a real yes man. and a, a fake yes. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you can't. So she has that too. Okay. <laughs> uh, for those who doesn't know, know uh, has that. Ed, Ed Phil, and uh, Kyle here, uh, uh, they're both in laws. Uh, basically, uh, their wives are sisters. So <laughs> yeah, they, so they must know how to, uh, you know. Uh, they, they came from the same roots, so <laughs> yeah. She had she also has that the the yes and the, yes, that, <laughs> the, the fake funny. yes and the trap yes. <laughs> yeah, I but, admire you, Kyle, because I've been with my wife for 15, 16 years, and for me, a yes is still a yes. So, even with rolling eyes, I would be on my way out of the door. Like, can I go? No, yes, <laughs> no, trust me. It, it took a while to learn. It, it's uh, it, it's it's somewhere in between the lines, but eventually, ten years later, you kind of get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, now I need to take notes. Uh, I'm about to get married, so I need to take notes from you guys. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think the first thing that. is just yeah. you have to be a mind reader, and then you'll be okay. <laughs> but I think that's one of her talents, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not all can do that as fast as you <laughs> 10 years might be for me i think it, it took around 11 years <laughs> so you, so you my, just my, need professor x's uh you know uh mutant skill <laughs> mine mine took a while but you know i think i just got too thick skin that you know it doesn't really matter i'll just get something when i get home I get <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i think i remember that time kyle uh was that in uh palawan when that call happened, right? We were 
was it like we're eating lunch, right? In one. Yeah. Yeah, we were. Um, I think we just literally got on the road and we stopped at our first stop. And yeah. I, outside of me was like, "Oh, this sucks," because like I'm really cutting my vacation short. But then, like, that's the thing as a filmmaker. I, I don't work every day of the week. Like, if you count the amount of days that I work, it's probably less than half of the year. So when an opportunity like that comes up, it's like it's just it's kind of a no brainer. You have to take it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's something and, like, uh, and yeah. I think during that time, the, the the pandemic or rather the the news about COVID is starting, right? So, I mean, just imagine what would have happened if we didn't accept that gig or that role, right, or that job. So I I, I just don't know what's the, I mean the impact of that, right? Because after that month, I think it's pure lockdown and then everything stalled, right? So if you haven't taken that. Probably uh, we're you, talking right you now. You would have been stuck in the Philippines for several months. <laughs> yeah, that too. That too. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, that is very true, um, Kuya. Like from a candid perspective, right? That job squeezed in between the cracks. So mm-hmm. right after that, we went on just four months of like no work at all, nothing, crickets. So uh-huh. it was a blessing that that came through because it. it, it it made things just a lot more cushiony to to go into a situation like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's really, I mean, it's it's. I think for for all of our listeners, it this is something that we should take into consideration, right? That every opportunity, no matter how small or how big, yeah. like that, we should take it as a blessing and consider if we we have that chance again, or we should take the chance to learn or to 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 improve ourselves, right? So, okay. Yeah, that, that that's where you really appreciate the support of a uh, uh, your Pilafina w- wife. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that, if shout she out to Mariel, you, right? Shout, shout, shout out, Marielle. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, because once you get married, it's it's no longer like you're making decisions for yourself. It's it's a team now, exactly. and exactly like a basketball team. If everyone's not um, on the same page or embrace the same culture, then you guys are not going to win that championship. Like Golden State, right? Like Warriors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, not like yeah. Lakers. Or sorry, yeah, sorry. That's, 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 <laughs> sorry, I'm a Miami Heat fan, so I'm still beating. Oh well, yeah, that's that's true, Kyle. Especially now, what happened here in the world? I mean, with the pandemic and everything. I mean, before everybody was all about the good stuff, right? You work for the good stuff. Besides, for for family, you work for the good stuff. With what happened, you know, I agree with you. I mean, it, you try to make things more cushiony. You want things to get get better. Now it's more of like not just surviving, but trying to give a good life to your family, right? And putting aside like you know having like the good stuff in life. It's really more of trying to make it as comfortable as possible until we get through what's going on in the world um, today. Yeah, for sure. So the biggest thing I'm working on right now is just I struggle. Like you have your phone with you 24/7 and trying to disconnect, <laughs> but I'm just really trying to work on being present because. When those opportunities come, I have to take them. But at the yeah. same time, when I'm home, I need to be present as possible too. So like I'm I'm fulfilling both roles. Correct, correct. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. So, yeah, so, 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 yeah, sorry, go, go ahead. No, I, I'm just curious about the the latest episode or the latest series that you work on. I think I saw the post of Marielle about the state of inspiration, right? You you work on mm-hmm. that, right? So uh, what I'm saying is, uh, can you share a little more about that? Because uh, I think it's very timely because when, when that happened, I think uh, the, the election is very near and all of the stuff. So it's a, it's a very, I mean, it's, I, I'm sure it's more than just a marketing or a campaign uh, kind of work or project. It's more, there's more deeper sense to that project. So can you share more about that state of inspiration? Yeah, that was a very ambitious um, project. It involved me sitting at this desk for 14 hours a day for, I think, almost three weeks. Wow. (laughs) Uh, We had to coordinate between Bill Gates' team, um, Fauci's team, Stacey Abrams' team, and then the concept of it is simple. It's just two people talking to each other and having a conversation like we are now, but you have the live streaming part of it. You have the, uh, 
the the, the filming part of it because you have to coordinate multiple video teams to film it. Uh, but technically, it was just pretty ambitious. But the content itself was uh, really timely, and uh, I enjoyed it. And I learned a lot, like listening to Curry and uh, Gates talk when we were producing it, and especially Stacey Abrams. Uh, mm-hmm. She led the um, she mobilized eight hundred thousand voters to turn out in Georgia to change wow. the election. Yeah, so, that's a that's a very game changer state mm-hmm. right there. Yeah, yeah, and like to produce content for people like that that's actually making a difference and um, helping out the world. Like it just it, it makes it feel more rewarding. Yeah. So uh, and just as your brother in though, I'm really proud of you for that project. It's 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 oh. really great. Thank you, thank you. That means a lot. Well, that's family, <laughs> man. That's, that's family. Yeah. But thank, yeah. thanks to technology, right? That's that ambitious project. It's it's something like, for example, five years ago, four years ago, it's like totally impossible. But at least now it's just ambitious, right? Because of technology. <laughs> yeah. So it's like technology connects us and it, and it uh, makes us be able to connect you guys in the Philippines. Uh, it's like 2, 3 p.m. there and I'm here at night and we can still talk yeah. and have this conversation. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, talking about inspiration, um, of course, with all these great work that you did uh, with the big stars, uh, of course, there's family behind it. And I've seen your personal profile. Uh, you've been traveling a lot, like you've been around the world technically. Uh, maybe let's start with travel. Uh, your cultural awareness must be really sky high. Can you tell us more about your travels? Uh, and now with the family, yeah, you have, a, you have a small kid. So how's travel like? Yeah, that's been the hardest thing with COVID, just not being able to travel how we usually do. Uh, but going back to my wife, I think before her, I mostly did domestic travel, but she's a huge travel bug. So when we got together, <laughs> our first trip was to Europe and then I caught the travel bug. And now I think I'm <laughs> in 34 countries and she's 36 countries. Sweet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so is there like a, so, a goal of number of countries to be visited? Do you have like a list well, map there with a pin <laughs> that you need to go to? <laughs> Yeah, there's an app called <laughs> there's an app called Bin. Um, let's see. So I think I've been to yes, yeah, so I've been to 34. But it's just like, can you see that? Like, look how big the world is. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So the orange so, spots so, are the ones that you've been to. Yeah, that I've been to. So like, I was looking at it and I'm like, okay, I've been a good amount of places. But then uh-huh. you realize like, it's so much more to experience in this world. I think that's only so it's 13 percent of the world, but. Um, we still have a bucket list. So um, usually we write a list of places mm-hmm. and then whatever's cheapest, that's where we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, wherever now, we can find a deal. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the numbers. You said 34, 36. Now I'm trying to think like, how can he like match the 36 or even go about 36? Cause he always has to be with his wife. So I think you need to. Oh. <laughs> I know. Right. So we <laughs> usually, I can only get away for two, two and a half weeks. And sometimes she'll go for a month. So whenever I come back home, she'll squeeze a few more in. She's, she's a cheater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but which travel is, uh, you think is the most memorable? Oh, well, I'm, I'm not just saying this because I'm on your podcast, but definitely the Philippines. Is oh, really? Amazing. really? Well, it's just because it's like, the one thing I learned about travel is you can go and you can experience the place, but if you don't know anyone, you're just going to experience it from a tourist. It's just the surface. Mm-hmm. But like when I go to the Philippines, I'm with my sister-in-law and I'm with Kuya Edville and they're showing me like the real Philippines. So mm-hmm. I mean, I'm embracing it like a local. Really, yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so any plans to move here? <laughs> yeah. Any plans? Yeah, I think I, I, I may want to retire in the Philippines. It's too uh, expensive here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Bay Area is very expensive. Now, where, if, if you don't mind, I mean, where is this place that you really want to go that you can't do it now or soon? Not because of COVID, but mainly because you've been or, or maybe saving up for it or it's a place that you want to go to, but you can't really get it to right now. Um. There's a lot on the bucket list. Like we've done a lot of Europe and we've done a lot of Asia. So I would love to do uh, Morocco, um, Egypt. So maybe more of like Africa. 
Mm. And then Oceania. Um, I've been to Australia, but I love to go experience. Um, I've been to Sydney, but I love to experience more of Australia, like the, the oh, outback. Part, yeah. Mm. yeah, the outback. Yeah, where the deadly animals are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think my favorite place outside of Philippines was Tanzania. Um, mm. Our tour guide embraced us and treated us more like a uh, like family. So that was the only other place that I got like the local experience, like after the tour was done he let us hang out with them and he took us places so sweet. i felt like a local again yeah, sweet. yeah that's, so, that's so sweet man yeah so, so how about travel now i mean with a kid uh and it's she's a year and a half old right uh so mm-hmm. i saw your post like you you read an rv and you basically go around the u.s <laughs> so how's travel now yeah like we've spent all this time doing international travel but then You never, you always take for granted your home country. You don't oh, really yeah. explore it too much because you always want to go to Philippines and Europe and all these places. Uh, but experience in the U.S. and the um, we bought a Sprinter and converted it. Experience in the U.S. has been super fun. So since lockdown, I've been doing like a lot of camping and nature and just driving to different states and trying to be responsible, but like being more out in nature. So that's been fun. Sweet, sweet. So, uh, which, uh, when was your like last trip with a with a kid you had? With your family. Yeah. So, we drove cross country. Um, that's three thousand miles. I think you guys go by wow. kilometers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, <laughs> I guess a total of if you was to drive straight, it would take you probably like forty hours. Forty hours. Like we did it almost two days. Yeah. yeah, we did it over the course of um, two and a half weeks. Um, I wish we had more time, but yeah, two and a half weeks. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. That's the time that yeah. you went to New York, right? Yeah, so we went... Um, oh, yeah, Eamon, you, you, you've lived in LA, right? Yeah, 66? You took the 66? Or... Yeah, so we went up towards Portland because I had um, oh, okay. some work to do on the van. And then we went high um what highway was that i think that's 80 and then we went all the way across like we went through uh montana and uh-huh. then we stopped at yellowstone cluster oh, yeah. park yeah uh, so Wyoming. mount rushmore uh-huh. Uh-huh. uh-huh uh very interesting part of the world like <laughs> yeah I, I, when i was in la uh, uh i've always been planning to go like from la you know from the song from la to chicago uh from from west to east kind of travel but i never get the chance to uh, uh to travel but yeah it's part of my list actually maybe and good, yeah. after your wedding and with a kid <laughs> man uh, that's that's impressive uh that's that's really like, yeah. it was how, easier how... then it was easier then because she didn't do much like um yeah, she walked yeah. the, she was walking um but she wasn't as active as now and she had more <laughs> sleeping time but now We haven't taken a van trip since she's been like kind of everywhere. So yeah. uh, I want to see how it goes now. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ava, right? I, I mean, Ava has her yeah. own Instagram. Guys, you should follow. Uh, oh, yeah, by the way. Uh, uh, what's her Instagram uh, handle? Uh, Ava underscore Henry. Ava Lynn underscore Henry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And she has her own travel uh, uh, Instagram page, right? Uh, what's it called? Yeah. Yeah, she's been to um, I want to say five countries in 19 wow. states. That's more than that than my <laughs> more than my, wow. my points, right? My check-in. <laughs> When she gets older and she sees those pictures, uh, she must be really, you know, I need to visit these again and uh, recreate these photos of me. <laughs> you know, so. you know, my daughter. Uh, Uh, Riri, uh, uh, she always watches her cousin before going to sleep. She watches oh. the, the Instagram stories. <laughs> oh, Ava? Nice. Ava? <laughs> yeah, And my uh, wife, maybe, she get... maybe he, she's just like, you know, dad, don't be cheap on me. You take me traveling. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> Ava's like way ahead of me. You got to take me somewhere. <laughs> get get yeah. me an RV. <laughs> Let's go I don't want to buy an RV and went to traffic, right? So <laughs> <laughs> it's no use. Yeah. It's no use. I just wait after I that. Joke, 
I joked with my wife. I was like, are you going to be one of those moms that post your kid on your Instagram all the time? She's like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. And then technically she was right. She made a separate Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, technically it's not her you. page. So. <laughs> yeah, she, 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 she's right. It's not her page. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, funny. that's funny. Yeah. Because they would deny it. They would deny it. They just say like, "Oh, I'm just, I'm just, you know, appreciating." Okay. <laughs> but now it's like a reality TV show. I, I can't even walk around the house without being on camera because she tips everything. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So keeping up with the Henrys, huh? <laughs> Soon, man. Soon. <laughs> so, so how it's like being married to a Filipino? Um, this is a safe space, so share anything you want. <laughs> safe space, but recorded and, <laughs> and going to be public. If you want me to cut this out uh, for the episode, just let me know, man. <laughs> to, to me, it's amazing. Like, um, I'm I'm American. My family's um, Caribbean, so we have a lot of like the same um, traits. Like, my family didn't grow up wearing any shoes in the house, so that's a big thing for her. She doesn't wear any shoes in the house, mm-hmm. and. Um, I always joke that Filipinos are like the um, the Black Asians. Like you guys <laughs> love food, you love greasy food. You're Tell loud me about it. when family gets together. Everyone talks. Um, the aunties are always dissing you. Uh, so it's like the same thing in uh, Black culture. <laughs> ah, so um, you, you know you know the whole auntie thing, right? Uh, the, the classic Thanksgiving. Well, uh... <laughs> the, the Filipino aunties are a little unique, though. Like it's. Uh, I, sometimes I can't tell if it's a compliment or they're dissing me, but I think it's kind of all wrapped in one. The level yeah, of poker face for... is unbelievable, man. It's uncanny. You should wait if it's the uncanny. auntie yeah. laughs after. You should wait after that uh, line. After a line, wait for five seconds. If the auntie laughs, it's a joke. <laughs> no, it's a joke. Yeah. Typically, the greeting always starts with, Kyle, what happened with you? Or what happened to you? It always starts with that. Mario mom does this. Um, so uh, I used to have a head full of hair. No, no more, as you can see. <laughs> and I get on FaceTime with Mario's mom and she's like, hey, Kyle, how are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm doing good, mom. Good to see you. She goes, mm, what happened to your hair? And I go, well, you know, it just doesn't grow the same. And she goes, oh, OK, uh, but I really, really like you better with your hair. And I go, me too, mom. I, I like me better with my hair too. And then she goes, you should grow it back. And I go, well, I don't know if it works that way, mom. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. That was funny. That was just funny, man. Um, so I heard you've been trying to learn Tagalog as well. Uh, Carlo prepared something for you. Carlo. <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to do the, the long tongue twisters. We're just doing like a simple game, right? Okay. Typically, you just have to like say it as many times as you can, right? And whoever gets it the most wins. So try saying Pasco Paxiu. So Pasco means That's Christmas. Easy, yeah? Just Pasco it means Christmas. Then Paxiu, I think it's some sort of a stew, right? I- no, I think you've tasted that, Cal. It's yeah. it, it's like a it's, it's like it's a fish or it's a any... fish, but the, the fish is cooked. Yeah, well, there the is vinegar. like lechon also, like lechon. Yeah, yeah, lechon yeah, it's, also. yeah. Uh, anyway, gotcha. anyway, no, no, it's, it's there's no point. There's no point in that. I seen the map. There's no meaning about that, right? I seen the map. You've been to Peru. Is that was that Peru or Chile? Uh, you oh, have Peru. a oh, that was Peru. So you've probably tried mm-hmm. uh, ceviche, right? So yep. yeah, ceviche. Paxi is like a ceviche, but the fish is cooked. So yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. So you just have to do it like pasco, paxi, pasco, paxi, as fast as you can and as yeah, many as you can. It's very easy. Yeah. You can do it, Cal. Just two words. Okay. Pasco, 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 pasco. You got it all wrong, man. I'm sorry. You got it all wrong. On the first, on the first day, it's already wrong. So. How do you say it? Pasco, Pasco, Say it slow. I see. Pasco, Pasco, Paxiu, Paxiu. There you go. Pasco, Paxiu. 
Pasco, Paxcu. Pasco, Paxcu. I'm ready. Close enough, man. Close enough. But yeah, you should record this. Send this to Mario. Uh, Carlo, can you try that, Carlo? Come on, Carlo. I think you can yeah. do it. Um, Pasco, Paxcu, Pasco, Paxcu, Pasco, Paxcu, Pasco, Paxcu. Oh, <laughs> you've been practicing. Yeah, yeah uh, earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was an online last night just to practice that. So <laughs> we, we wanted to try something different. Uh, we wanted, like, you know, Minica. Nico, Nimonico, or Manic Machina, Naminica, Nimonica. But Evel was like, dude, I can't even say it. Let's try something else. <laughs> you, you know what, Cal? You should give Carlos some tongue twister. Yeah, maybe in English. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, in English. What's a. Um, oh, I think we I think we only have. Um, oh, what is the English tongue twister? I don't even know. You stumped me. Peter Piper, Peter Piper. <laughs> Peter or the seashell, yeah, the seashell, the, the, the something. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but guy, what's your favorite Tagalog word right now? <laughs> Except for not mahal. Not when mahal. you're angry. Not when you're angry. But it's okay. <laughs> um, Ava, Mario is teaching Ava a lot of um, Tagalog in English, so I always joke that. I'm going to have the Tagalog of a three-year-old and she'll just surpass me. So <laughs> all of my Tagalog is very basic. Um, so right now, like, uh, what have, what's the latest one that she's in? Um, now I'm having a nosebleed. I can't remember. I think, he, I think he, uh, I've heard Tikbalang, right? Oh, Tikbalang. Oh, what is it? A- Anotu? And then... Um, oh, okay. What's this? Oh, yeah. yeah, what's this? Yeah, yeah what's Anotou, this? Yeah. And then Anoto. And then Anosabe. Anosabe. Oh. How do you say this, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so, so your Tagalog right now is it a sur- uh, is it on the level of survival? You can you know survive in one uh, in one reunion, Philippine reunion. Yeah, as in or... literally a Filipino <laughs> reunion in a province. I, I probably won't be able to talk back, but at least I'll I'll know context. <laughs> oh, you, you'll, you'll get some words <laughs> out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I've heard you practicing on like Tikbalang and, <laughs> and the other monsters, right? Oh yeah, I was trying to learn a little bit on the um, some podcasts and apps, but the hard part is like if I pronounce it like re- just remotely wrong, then <laughs> she's like, "What did you say?" I'm like, "No, I pronounced that right." Or one word has like a couple of different meanings, so it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty yeah, hard. That's true. Yeah. yeah. You could be saying something different. You don't want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want? No. Yeah, you could you, you could be trying to compliment somebody and turn out to be. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's similar to other language, right? Japanese yeah. or Chinese. It, it also depends on the yeah. tone and uh, exactly. yeah. how you said it. Like, ano or ano? It's it, it really yeah. Really, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's really different. So. I think you're you're go, you're improving, but uh, <laughs> when you when you go back here, that's practice. Oh yeah, we should meet up, man. Uh, exactly. Uh, we yeah. Get back here. Uh, uh, we owe you some brewskis, man. <laughs> oh, for sure. No, I like that. And once this is all over, I'm definitely planning to come back. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Anyway, going back uh, to to your craft, it's just film, and uh, you know, uh, just before we end, this, this is probably the last uh, uh, questions that I've. For you so outside weddings commercials outside all those work that you've been doing uh do you have anything that uh where you really you know uh put your heart into yeah so um i always thought i wanted to get into filmmaking to do like feature films and um longer content but now that i have a family uh, balancing that and work is my priority now so really shorter content that still tells a story. So we've mm-hmm. been focusing a lot on uh, narrative commercials. And a lot of the times I find the passion is, is when we can tell a story in a short amount of time that's impactful. Mm-hmm. So uh, whether that's a documentary or commercial, uh, but I've been doing a lot of passion projects this year where it's just short of um, content that's one to two minutes, but it's still telling a story. Oh, you, you might want to promote all those content right now. Or... Where, for where, sure, where, yeah. So, yeah, we're like where, where the main thing is, um, henryandcook.com is my directing website. Um, it's me and my directing buddy. Uh, we've uh, gotten together two great minds to do uh, directing awesome. projects. 
And I'll, I'll just say too, like for any creative that's like watching this, uh, whether you're getting paid well or you're not getting paid well, like um, just it's a long road and it takes a lot of like trial and error and a lot of grit and uh, perseverance. So just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons and that you're letting like passion fuel you because like this profession, it's super hard. So <laughs> the thing that's going to keep you going is just being passionate about what you do. So like uh, I work crazy long days and I do a lot of like grueling work, but I'm passionate about it. And that's what keeps me going. That's what I actually about, I was about to ask. Uh, and then you just answered it. Uh, I mean, I actually have a friend. Uh, he's a filmmaker based in Florida. Uh, it's Filipino, and uh, we were just talking and playing games. It's Call of Duty, by the way, <laughs> uh, the other day. And uh, I told him, hey, I have a filmmaker uh, based in uh, uh, Northern California uh, guesting on my podcast. Uh, you might want to, you know, give it a listen. And, uh, you know, he's been in the industry for quite a while, and you might want to give it a listen. He just bought a $6,000 camera, by the way, to, to start filmmaking. So he has the, uh, the, the, the money, and, <laughs> you know, and... <laughs> Uh, and he just answered on, on or, or can you give like him an advice or any anyone there out there who wants to i mean right now all content is king by the way and you know there are a lot of vloggers there are a lot of uh, content creators uh, in the internet yeah. uh, a lot of people trying to start their own content or, or however, however they want to go there uh, do you want like, do you have like one piece of advice uh, for them to go into this industry Yeah, like um, my main advice. So I, I don't do like any vlogging or um, vlogging stuff like that. But from a business perspective, mm -hmm. I talked about passion, like on a creative perspective. But from a business perspective, I would say don't get too caught into the gear. Like a lot of people, I know you mentioned it, he bought like a six thousand dollar camera, yeah. <laughs> and I'm very, I'm very guilty of buying just crazy expensive gear. But what I'm learning is the gear is not what's going to make you successful just like any other business it's the relationships and cultivating those relationships that's going to be the game changer like that's what's going to make people want to hire you again like um the work that i do with steph i came out the first time and i, I shot a really good product but i think the reason why they keep calling me is because they actually enjoy working with me mm -hmm. and they enjoyed um my company when i came so mm -hmm. cultivating those relationships and making sure people remember you That's what's going to keep you working. Awesome, totally awesome. agree. Yep. Yeah, that's great, a great piece great of advice, advice, man. Uh, so, it's it's attitude, not not anything that you know that that that, yeah. that, that would you know. There's there's no buying into success, and uh, it's all about attitude of how you treat people. Or yeah, and also that the right mindset, of course, right? Exactly. So, yeah. That's very yeah. important. Because once once you get to this threshold, they're going to expect you to have like a threshold of talent before you even can kind of even into the room. Mm -hmm. But there's a million guys in the Bay Area in LA that has this threshold of talent. But the next threshold is like, do they actually like you? Exactly. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally I think agree. that I think that works for a lot of industries. Even in, in our line of work, me and Ned Hall, yeah. I mean in IT work, it's the speed of trust and exactly. and how they really, you know, enjoy working with you and how they really find you working with their Uh, with their stuff, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. I, ag I agree, because you could be like the smartest guy in the room, right? But if they don't, they don't like you, if you're talking mm -hmm. trash, though, even if you're like the smartest guy in the room, they would just like shove you away. Okay, you know, we want somebody else. We'll take the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, maybe just to share, uh, even in, because uh, currently I'm taking up MBA or uh, Master in Business Administration, uh, they also teach you that, that, when um, companies evaluate suppliers, it's not just about your price, the quality. There's also a factor about how easy your, uh, they work with you or how, how easy is it to, um, to, to have some, of course, requests and also how is, how is it to get the job done. So it's, there's, there's also matrix or some metrics to measure that. So that's from a technical or yeah. from a um, scientific point of view. There's also... That's that's really a factor in terms of a uh, scoring or measuring the the value of a supplier. Anyway, uh, maybe I just like to add uh, in your Instagram, Iman, right? There's a Kickstarter link. Uh, oh yeah, you might want to uh, promote uh, one or of share what, Kickstarter what's the... campaign. Uh, it's yeah. called IQ Vision Check Two. 
the the the. But I mean, yeah, I, I think that's very helpful for me personally as a four-eyed <laughs> person. Uh, <laughs> Uh, every year I get myself, you know, tested if uh, I'm still wearing the pro- appropriate uh, uh, glasses for me. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Or you might want to promote yeah, no. it here. Th- yeah. yeah, thanks for plugging that. Um, the, the better they do, maybe they'll hire us again. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it's a great concept and a great product. Um, and they approached us to like, Usually a video like that takes about two, three weeks of planning. I think we planned it in less than five days and we wow. put the whole thing together in less than two weeks. Um, and they had a professional video to share at like their next conference. Uh, but it was super fun to make. And the product is actually really cool too, like you said. Yeah, I think that's also important that you really believe in the product of your customer, right? So <laughs> that's, a, that's a really cool stuff that you got there. Yeah, okay, so... Living in yeah. the valley, man, you must have a lot of uh, you know customers like that. I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, you know tech startups are trying to get their uh, products, to, you know, to look Product as software. compelling yeah. as possible. So, yeah. Kyle, just yeah. give us a discount, right, when we uh, take our <laughs> own startup. So planning soon. So I will reach out to you, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, I, I got you. I- I don't know if I can compete with the donuts, but I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a tough challenge. I mean, I've been, while talking, to, I've been staring at donuts like for quite a while. I'm like, yeah. yeah sorry if you saw, saw me earlier. I was like nibbling some through some small bits of donuts. It was really good, by the way. If you get here, I'll, I'll get like a dozen of boxes dozen of box by the way <laughs> not so, box. yeah, yeah not donut. Yeah, we, that, we really really love it my daughter she she ate a lot <laughs> oh, she, oh i forgot no to say it. that's the best thing about being married to a filipino the food oh man the food so good oh, except yeah. for oh. except for palabok right kyle except for palabok well, is that considered food? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell, guys, I'll tell you the story after this. Is. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, I think that's about it. Thank you yeah. very much, Kyle. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, guys. It was wonderful. Thank you Thanks so much. Me. Thank you, thank yeah, you. Uh, before we go, uh, we would like to thank our... Uh, uh, our friends to sponsor Mint Relief. It's an all-natural and quick solution that helps with indigestion, gas, bloating, and GERD. With all A Global Care Top 1 in Lazada, so order now and use at Mint promo code to avail 20% discount. And of course, Layapure, our official skincare provider. Check out layapure.com for more details. All right. Don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, subscribe to the Bad Boys Facebook page and YouTube channel. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.